Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. So in today's video, we're going to learn about a different kind of multiplier, okay, called the tax multiplier. Okay, before that, let's do a little bit of revision. The multiplier is basically a change in real GDP given that there's an initial change in spending. Okay, now let's take a look at the tax multiplier, which is the ratio of a change in real GDP to an autonomous or a lump sum change in tax. But you may have noticed there's a negative sign here because we know that taxes are a form of leakage. What is leakage again? Remember, leakage is when spending goes out from the circular flow. What that means is the higher or when there's an increase in tax, it will bring about to a fall or a negative change in real GDP, vice versa. Okay, and this is the other or alternative formula for the tax multiplier, which is negative MPC over MPS. Do familiarize yourself with both formulas because uh, it depends on the information given in the question. Sometimes you are not given the MPC and MPS, so you can use the first formula here. But if you are given the MPC and MPS and they ask you to calculate the tax multiplier or how much is the change in GDP, you can use the second formula. Okay, so now let's look at what happens to GDP or real GDP when there's a change in taxation. Like before, we're going to look at how to uh, determine the new equilibrium GDP using two methods, which is the first one, aggregate expenditures and output approach, and of course the leakage injection approach. Now when we talk about the multiplier or the G multiplier before, the government spending has a direct impact on aggregate expenditure because simply because aggregate expenditure, okay, aggregate expenditure is C plus IG plus, oops, G plus XN. Okay, so whenever there's a change in government spending, it will directly impact aggregate spending. All right. Now taxes, however, it has an indirect impact because if you can see from the formula here, there is no T. There's no taxation element here. So how does it affect aggregate spending? When there's taxation, okay, oops, it will basically impact consumption here. Now how is that, how, you know, how did that happen? Okay, remember in the last topic, topic four, the first part when we learned about the relationship between income, consumption, and savings, okay, so taxation actually impacts disposable income. If there's a change in taxation, okay, it will bring about to a change in disposable income. Now you know disposable income, okay, it will further impact or change consumption and savings. Okay, so let's give an example. Say taxation increases. So if there's an increase in tax, what happens to disposable income? There'll be a fall in disposable income because we're paying more tax, okay? It's a leakage, remember? So now when there's a fall in disposable income, it will affect both of this. How will it affect consumption and saving? Consumption will fall, and savings will also fall. So I need you to go back to the video in topic four if you don't understand how this relationship comes about, okay? So anyway, this C here is a component of the aggregate expenditure here, see? So this is what it means by taxation has an indirect impact on spending. It will reduce disposable income and it will reduce C. So what happens is, okay, if you look at the Keynesian cross, okay, hold on, there. If you look at the Keynesian cross, there will be a parallel downward shift. Okay, so up here is the original aggregate expenditure. So when there's taxation, the entire shift, uh, the entire curve will shift downward, see? Okay, let's try to put some figures in our example. Say taxes increase by 20 billion. So how much will the consumption and savings change? Now you know there's a relationship between income, consumption, and savings. And you also know that when taxes change, it will affect disposable income. Okay, so this is why we need to use the concepts of MPC and MPS. Given a change in income, how much will consumption and savings change? Okay, see in this example, MPC is given as 0 0.75. So we know from the um, relationship, MPC plus MPS equals to 1. Okay, so if MPC is 0 0.75, MPS is 0 0.25. Okay, so anyway, let's look at here. When there are taxes, when tax increase, what happens is disposable income falls. Okay, by how much do disposable income fall? Disposable income will fall by the same amount of the tax. All right, but how much would 
consumption and saving for? Well, it depends on the proportion, okay? So if MPC is 75% or 0.75, you just multiply the MPC 0.75 with 20. So that will give you a 15 billion fall in consumption. So the balance would be 5 billion a fall in savings. So if you add these two together, you'll get the total change in disposable income. So this change would happen at each GDP level. Okay, so what does that mean? These changes happen at each GDP level. That is why you see here there's a parallel shift downwards. The slope is the same, meaning for each GDP level, there'll be a fall of consumption by 15 billion. Okay, so this is why, or this is how we got 15, okay? The MPC 0.75 multiplied with the change in tax, so it will give you 15 billion decrease in consumption. So how much is our multiplier in this case? As you can see, there's a fall worth 15 billion in consumption, which is due to an increase of 20 billion in taxes. So using the first formula just now, up here, right, we can see that the change in real GDP, which is 60, Okay, just find the difference, 60, divide by the change in tax, or 20. So 60 over 20, you'll get 3. Okay, maybe I can show you the calculation here. See, so this is how we get the multiplier, tax multiplier. Okay, and alternatively, you can use the second formula, which is minus MPC over MPS. But sometimes people just ignore the negative sign because it's understood there's a negative relationship, right? So MPC is 0 0.75 over 0 0.25, you get 3. See, so whichever formula you use, you get the same answer for the tax multiplier. Okay? Um, here is just basically, because um, sometimes they'll give you the multiplier and they ask you to find what is the change in GDP. So you just shift around the formula and you get, you'll be able to get how much is the change in GDP. Right, so now let's take a look at what happens when there's taxation and what's the impact on the real GDP using the leakage injection approach. Now, just like before, with leakage injection approach, we do not use the Keynesian cross. Okay, so here, uh, let's start our sketch or diagram with a leakage injection diagram. So here would be our real GDP, and this axis is basically our leakage and injection. Okay, so our leakage is savings, import and taxation, our injections are uh, gross investment, exports, and government spending. Okay. Right, so initially, this would be our injection, yeah? IG plus X, right? Okay, um, and plus G, of course. But here, there's no G example, so you can ignore it if you want to. And initially, our um, leakage is savings and M. Okay, there's no T yet. I haven't put in that information yet. So initially... Um, our equilibrium was 550. Now, this figure is exactly the same as the one that um, I showed you in Keynesian cross just now. Okay, so the story is, uh, what was the story just now? Say we have taxation, right? So, can you see? Okay, say we have taxation. When tax increases by 20 billion, okay, right? So, what will it affect? It will affect disposable income, right? So, disposable income will fall by 20, right? So, there's a sort of direct relationship there. But you also know that when there's a change in disposable income, it will bring about two changes in both consumption and saving. As you can see in the leakage injection approach, you don't show consumption. You can't show it here. Consumption is shown in the Keynesian cross. Here we show the change in savings as well as tax. Okay? So you know, when there's a fall in disposable income by 20 billion, how much is the change in uh, consumption just now? Um, 20 billion times 0 0.75, so consumption falls by 15, oops, okay, and savings here falls by 5. Okay, I showed you the calculation earlier. So now we can actually show this change in this diagram, okay? So when there, this is basically a change in savings after tax. Therefore, we can actually see, okay, make sure you use a ruler here, savings after tax plus import. So there's a fall, okay, in this, um, a leakage line by how much? By 5 billion. Okay, savings fall. Okay, fall in savings by 5 billion. Okay, by this amount. However, uh, we don't achieve equilibrium yet because we, sh we must also show the change in taxation, right? So the change in taxation is 20. So if here's 5, um, so you can just, well, 
agak-agak eh, lebih kurang. Eh. So here would be the savings after tax plus M. And we also have to show the change in T here. Okay, so from here to here, this is actually an increase in tax by 20. Can you see here? So maybe you can put a number. This is change. This is the first thing that happens, the second thing that happened. But of course, in practice, it happens at the same time, okay? It's simultaneous. Okay, it's just that here you can see me going, drawing it slowly. So this is our actual or our final <coughs> equilibrium, which is 490. The same figure as what we, uh, what you saw in the Keynesian cross. So a change from 550 to 490 is a change in GDP by how much? 60, 60 billion. So as you can see here, we can also show the tax multiplier effect from this diagram. See, change in GDP is 60 billion, change in tax is 20. So how much is the multiplier? 60 over 20, you get 3. Okay, so basically, whichever, regardless whether you use the leakage injection approach or right, the Keynes in cross just now, okay, so we will be able to show the effect that tax has on real GDP. We will also be able to show the calculation of multiplier if that's what's being asked, right?